And welcome to another edition of East L.A. Sports. And as we continue down the path of sports and wherever it goes, and it's very interesting and it's following some of our student athletes, not only as high school, but as college players, community college, Division One, whatever the case may be, we have always made that commitment that we will follow our kids and our athletes from the community because it's very important that their story gets told. And on this occasion, right here on this very, very beautiful uh, January day here in the City of Angels and East Los Angeles, Boyle Heights, California, we are very, very glad to bring into the studio for the first time. But He's not a stranger to East L.A. sports scene. We have spoken with him in the past, and we are going to speak to him now in the present to find out what is going on with our very, very good friend, Carlos Lozano, uh, a graduate of East L.A. Community College, and he is now going to give us an update as to where he is destined to go and continue his college education and get that degree and then move on into his career. Carlos Good to see you again, my Good friend. Good to see you again. <laughs> okay. Carlos, let's kind of pick up the story for our viewers because um, uh, they're able to see that we, when we interviewed you last uh -huh. at East LA College, you were already headed into Utah. Yeah. University of Utah, Pac-12, and uh, sky's the limit. So let's pick it up from there and find out how things are going and what's, what's happening now in your current uh, academic life and your school life. Uh, so last I was at the University of Utah, and um, I ended up, a few things ended up happening, and I had to... Uh, leave this fall this past fall so okay. no longer there but um still waiting for a few things to pick up you know okay. recruitment recruitment once again got a few offers in line and ah, um okay. actually getting closer to my degree i actually have a few two three semesters left so i can get my bachelor's in um, sociology yes so i'm definitely uh in, Happy for that, and then also okay. gonna chase a master's degree. Okay. So. Well, Carlos, let's uh, talk a little bit about um, uh, the, the situation at the University of Utah, maybe as a lesson learned in there for some of our uh, youngsters and viewers that are, are trying to understand this matriculation process, the scholarship process at very, very high-level schools in the Pac-12, Utah. Yeah. And, you know, we just have to be honest and say, um, this is, be careful, there may be pitfalls, but you've got to be well, really aware of your environment. Yeah, definitely, man. That's, you know, a lesson learned for me, you know. I mean, going to a big, a big university like that, you know, I was, I mean, overwhelmed a little bit. But, okay. you know, I mean, things happened and, you know, just pretty much, you know, I got into some stuff in the off season. you okay. know. I mean, academically, I was doing fine. Everything sure. was doing fine. I mean, when I first got there, I got there late because academically I was going to be ineligible. Mm. But when I, when I got there late, okay. I showed up in fall camp and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I mean, just what messed me up was the whole thing getting late there. So, you know, my okay. best, you know, advice is kind of try to get to a program, you know, in the off season. So you, get, you get a chance to get in shape and, mm -hmm. you know, pick up the whole, you know, be able to, you know, acclimate to everything oh. out there and stuff. Because it's, okay. it's that's plays a big role and stuff. Okay. And uh, at that point, uh, there, as they say, there was maybe a disagreement or um, uh, I guess the requirements on the scholarship uh, may have may or not have been fulfilled and they had to make a decision. Um, was that very difficult to, to go through? Well, I mean, no. I mean, I, I got a full ride. You know, I, okay. I mean, I got a full ride. Everything was paid for and everything mm. just, I mean, okay. as far as like, I want to, you know, like every player out there wants to play, you sure. know, but so I mean I wasn't gonna have the chance I, I I was I felt like I wasn't gonna get the chance okay. to play this year so I mean of course as a player you know you want to be on the field so I mean I wasn't gonna cut myself short I okay. mean I wasn't gonna get win the job because you know I was having a few problems with my sure. coach okay. my uh, offensive line coach I mean okay. we weren't getting along very well you know I disagreed in a few stuff that he okay. was agreeing on and I mean. You know, basically said, I mean, everything was going good until, mm -hmm. like, that aspect. Okay. So, I mean, I pretty much say, you know, okay. I want to I wanna be able to, like, be somewhere I'm going to get a chance to play. Yes. So, I mean, I just said, I mean, you know, I'm going to leave this institution. And, okay. I, I mean, just went up to the coach and, you know, pretty okay. much said that I was going to leave. So, that's what I did. Okay. And you were honest with them and you spoke yeah, yeah, your yeah, mind. Yeah, and yeah. That, that's the main out. thing. Yeah, that's – Okay. And, that's again, the, that's lesson learned. Thing. Yeah. Do not be afraid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't I mean, have no fear. It should have happened uh, – a lot, lot before, but I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I was I was afraid and stuff. Of yeah. course, you know, I was. Yeah. It was my first time, you know, going mm -hmm. through that process. So I mean, I was a little bit scared. I should have left before the spring because that's when it was happening. Yeah. But you know, I wanted to give myself a chance. You know, I was, you know, pretty much, you know, mm -hmm. I lesson learned. You know, okay. I did it. 
I did it a little late, but not too late. Okay. But, I mean, I'm in the situation right now where okay. I could still, you know, go back and play two years of football and get myself a degree and still have a chance okay. for the NFL. Now, let's go, Carlos, uh, to what you said uh, probably in the opening remarks that you have other offers. Yeah. So let's seize on that because that's yeah. that's your next step where yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, other Division One schools or maybe Division Two. I'm, I'm not sure of the eligibility requirements within the NC2A, but certainly you have eligibility. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. your options now are coming to you. So can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, those? definitely. Um, okay. As far as Division One, I would have one year of eligibility. So, okay. I mean, I feel like I need two years of football to really give myself a chance to play on Sundays. Okay. So, I mean – I made up my mind I'm going to go the Division Two route. Okay. But that's actually been a huge problem right now because once I left Utah, okay. I went to an NAIA school out in Mississippi. Mm -hmm. And um, they're trying to tell me – I was when I first got there, they weren't going to change my whole degree and stuff. Okay. So um, I wasn't going to cut it. So I was oh. like, nah. They pretty, I was lied to when I got there, you oh, know. No. Another lesson learned, you know. Okay. <laughs> done. So when I got there, it didn't turn out to be that I wasn't going to be able to graduate until three years later. Oh. So, I okay. mean, that was a big issue. So I was like, sure. you know what? I need to have a degree once before I even – anything happens, you know. Mm. So okay. that was my biggest thing. So, you know what? I said I packed up my stuff and I told okay. the coach, you know, I'm leaving. Yes. So they're trying to tell me that uh, I'm in a conflict over there with uh, school and stuff. They're trying to tell me that I attended class. And going, I'm going through an appeal process okay. right now with the NCAA. Wow. Oh, yeah. me. another lesson learned because another one, you know, <laughs> appeal with the NC2A, that's yeah. enough to scare yeah. any student athlete exactly. and their, even their parents away yeah. because it's so powerful. I mean, but, yeah, you know, there is a system that, at work. That yeah, you, I mean, you, you know. got to follow the rules, you know, I mean, yeah. I'm still, you know, I'm, I still got hope, you know, I mean, yeah. got faith that everything's going to be all right. And, you know, I mean, yes. hopefully I win the appeal process. But if that doesn't work where I can't play um, Division Two, mm -hmm. then I might, I still got a. A lot of Division threes and a lot of NAI schools all over the nation. But as far okay. as Division two, I mean, you name it, from A to Z, to Z everything. Every, every, every school is sure. offering me. You know, they yes. contacting me. But they're trying to um, – a lot of schools are uh, kind of backing off because of this whole um, okay. this whole um, appeal process I'm going sure. through. But there's one that I got in mind that's, you know, been – with me since day one, you know, and uh, okay. that's um, Lincoln University yes. out of Missouri. Yes. With uh, a lot of the kids from around here went to uh, Gabriel from East LA College. Yeah, Gabriel Gabriel Soto, Soto. Yes. Okay. And all them. So. Okay. I mean, that's the route I'm taking right now. So that's what I'm looking to uh, actually. I'm. I mean, I'm committed to them 100. Okay. percent So I'm. I'm actually waiting to see what they're gonna tell me. Um, they they called me this morning and they told me that it's looking great. You know, I was okay. a, I got a news in the morning telling me that it looks it's looking great for okay. me to they want me to go out there this weekend actually. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah, I haven't told nobody but I mean okay. I'm gonna tell my mom uh, maybe tomorrow. Okay. Maybe I'm gonna pack my stuff up and leave. But hopefully that goes through. But if it doesn't then you know, okay. I still got the Division Threes and they, all the NAIs sure. are still willing to take me and stuff. Sure, oh definitely, yeah, yeah. definitely. Because of your age and your eligibility, you yeah. have the right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To play, the full-fledged yeah. right to play exactly. uh, in uh, NC2A or college athletics, and yeah. no one can really turn you away. Yeah. And this is what we would uh, – would, I'm would. i taking from, from Carlos here the, the, the fact that if you believe in yourself and that confidence and that faith and you have good mentors, good coaches, good people surrounding you, um, this is a very good – situation to be in because you're going to make the right decision yeah, yeah, definitely. for yourself because it is your future yeah at stake you know, here I'm you you you're advocating for yourself a few people that are guiding me and stuff you know they're with yes. me and you know nobody's yes. my family and stuff you know, yes coach Mahar from east LA college and my yes. family, you know, they're still with me, so that's all that matters. Okay, we're going to take a quick break here, speaking with Carlos Lozano, and uh, right now his story is very, very important uh, to all the youngsters, you know, young players out there that at some point in time may encounter a situation uh, such as Carlos. So he's leading the way now the, down the path that says, hey, uh, although you may be offered scholarships, certainly these things may not um, be as successful as the coaches are talking about or as you believe they are once you get to school and things could happen. There could be some, you know, issues. And this is a good a chance to learn firsthand Definitely. from one of our very own, Carlos Lozano. And Carlos, uh, high school, Mont Montebello. Yeah, yeah. Montebello so, High School. Okay. Um, yeah. And we're going to follow Carlos all the way into the NFL. Believe us, he's going to be there. So we're going to take a quick break and come right back with more of East LA Sports Scene and Up Close and Personal with Carlos Lozano. 
And speaking with Carlos Lozano, it's, it is his dream, and he will pursue that to play on any given Sunday in one of the um, – the premier leagues in the world, the National Football League, and make no mistake about it, there is room in the league for a player and an individual like Carlos Lozano because he possesses the size and the strength, desire, ambition, and, of course, knowledge of the game. And, Carlos, um, we were talking about um, just getting back on the track with the Utah experience. Uh -huh. It's tucked away now. It's under water under the bridge. Yeah. And you, you, from there, you, you came back home, yeah, I did. and you embarked on a personal no mission. Tell us yeah. a little bit about that. I mean, just pretty much trying to, you know, I mean, it's at first I came home and I, I had a ship on my ch on my shoulder and stuff, you know, I mean, I was just going to go out there and, you know, prove myself to myself that I was going to, you know, that no matter what happens, you know, I it's, you know, those, that's what happens. Those are obstacles in life that mm -hmm. you got to go through, you know, that, and that's life. So I pretty much came home and, you know, I told myself, like, I mean, there's a lot of, you know, when... I mean, there's a lot of opportunities out there, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, especially for a guy like me, you know, there's always second, you know, the second chances, you know, I believe those are the best chances in life, you know. Yes. You got to be able to, you know, learn from your mistakes and stuff. So, I mean, when I came home, you know, you know, I, I just started working out again and okay. stuff, you know. I mean, I started going to the gym by myself, you know, with my buddy and, you know, just trying to stay in shape and stuff, you know. I kind of, I mean, it was, it's kind of hard, you know, because I stopped for a while. I mean, mm -hmm. I stopped working out for a while. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was just like, kind of like, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. I don't want to do this because when, once I started hearing from the NCAA that I wasn't going to be able to play and oh. stuff, you know, that kind of like knocked me down and, you know, like made me realize, you know, what's going to happen now? Like, mm -hmm. you know, I was, I, I didn't find motivation and stuff, you yeah. know. I was lacking that motivation, you know, but I mean, like I said, you know, those, that's just, that's what happens, you know. So, yeah. I mean, I picked myself back up, you know, I'm back at it again, you know, working mm -hmm. out again, trying mm -hmm. to, get in shape so I could, you know, go somewhere this far and, you know, sure. be a part sure. of the program, you know, be able to produce. And, and let's talk about your relationship with Coach uh, Steve Mojado, the head coach of East L.A. College. Uh, he's been a very uh, instrumental person uh, in your, as they would say, your your reconnection back into getting set for for, for, uh, for college again. Yeah, and I mean, that, hands down, man, that guy, you know, always, you know, always looking out for me and stuff, you know, like, I couldn't be more, more thankful for that guy than anybody else. You know, he mm -hmm. always – calling schools for me, you know, always mm -hmm. on the phone, trying to get me schools, you know, contact me and stuff, you know, okay. always seeing positive things for me to stay motivated, you know, and yes. I mean, that's that's big for me because, you know, I need that person to, you know, push me and tell me like, hey, everything, everything's going to be all right, you know, just be patient, you know, just calm down because, you yeah. know, yeah. I mean, it's, it's hard, you know, <laughs> when they tell you, hey, man, you can't play no more. It's yeah. like, man, like, you know, so you need that person to, like, tell you everything's going to be all right. You know, just yeah. stay calm, you know. And okay. he's that guy, you know, that right. always, like, tells me everything's going to be all right. And, I mean, okay. I trust him because, I mean, ever since I left out of Montebello, you know, <laughs> I trusted that yeah. guy. So, you know, that's my guy 100%. So okay. I'm going to trust everything he says. Okay. And you're on that path. There's no doubt about it. Any given day, you'll be in the weight room at ELAC or you'll be in the yeah. in, on, on the field or you'll be up wind sprints or doing the stairs. Or, yeah. You're in the gym as well. Yeah, yeah. So this is good because your conditioning is going to be really important. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. And um, um, Lincoln. Yeah. Let's, let's talk about that. It seems like that may be the best op – well, one of the top three options that yeah, you I mean, might exercise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that definitely. You know, um, I mean, like I said, I have every school out there, but they're the only one that are, like – actually willing to go through the whole process with me and stuff okay. because there a lot of uh, people are telling me that I'm going to have to sit out another year of football, so mm -hmm, sit out another mm -hmm. year. But, no. yeah. you know, three years of sitting out is going to be tough for me. So, I mean, okay. I told myself if I got to sit out three years, then you know, I might as well just hang yeah. it. But, you know, yeah. Lincoln's bearing with me. You know, they're going through the process with me. So, I mean, that's my number okay. one candidate right now. And there happens to be a good coach there to yeah, pick, uh, your interest, yeah, definitely. pick up your interest as well for the future. Yeah, I mean, Coach Jones, you know, he, he has a few connections to the NFL. You know, our mm -hmm. punter. That uh, Julio Segura from Elac that yes. played at Elac, he's out there, and you know okay. he already has a uh, Kansas City Chiefs, the St. Louis oh. Rams looking at him and stuff. Okay. So you know that's that's opening doors for yes. me to go up there. Once they look at him, they're gonna look at me, and that's sure. who's this guy, you know. So mm -hmm. okay, yeah. now uh, Carlos, <coughs> um, uh, we wanted to get into your mindset, so to speak, because you had the year off, and most likely you were watching a lot of yeah. Utah games, and yeah. you were watching also Division One, and then, of course, the BCS, and a, a, a very exciting uh, final game there for the BCS championship. Yeah. Let, let, 
uh, I'd like to know if you're watching the game. If I was sitting at, in, your, in your place watching the game with you, uh, are you looking at it maybe from the perspective of, say, the, the linemen? Are you looking at the overall team concepts or framework? Uh, mm, you know, I mean, just, to tell the <laughs> truth, it, it would, it would, I mean, I would rarely watch. I mean, I would, the only okay. person I would really watch is my uh, boy Anthony Denham, who's up at Utah. Utah. And a, yeah. a few of the other guys that I play with at ELAC, like Chris Clark at Syracuse Syracuse, and all them. Yes, yes. So, I mean, I looked at them, but, you know, I didn't really want to watch it because, you okay. know, I mean, of course I want to be out there. So, you know, that, I mean, okay. it hurts to, you know, like know that you should be up there and you're not there. So, I mean, I, I was just, you know, I would, I would try to watch a little bit, but not too much of okay. it because, you know, I mean, of course, sure. like, I was just like, nah, man, yeah. I'd rather just okay. hear about it than, you know, watch it because okay. at the end of the day, I know that should be me up there too. Okay. Well, I'll flip the coin then and then NFL then. Yeah. Maybe yeah. you were watching that a little differently or yeah, maybe yeah, there's I mean, a team yeah, that, that you like there. Yeah. yeah. I okay. mean, yeah, that, that I watch, you know, even though, I mean, it's hard too because, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. that that's what I love. You know, yeah. I love football. You know, it's hard watch just yeah. being able to watch it. You know yeah. I mean? Okay. I want to be up there playing it, you know. So it, <laughs> Absolutely. It's hard yeah. being able to watch it and stuff. So, I mean, okay. I try to watch it as much as I can, but, you okay. know, it's hard. Okay. Now, um, here in our last um, uh, portion of our program here, our the interview in, with you in segment one, um, you have some time also to go back to your alma mater. Yeah. In Montebello. And not only because it's your alma mater, but there is another Lozano. Yeah, yeah. And we're going to speak to it's, it's your cousin. Yeah, he's my little cousin. And But just a little preview about your cousin there, Montebello. Are you, did you maybe spend a little time helping um, with the high school team this season? Um, no, I actually wasn't able to help out because I came late and stuff. Okay. But, I mean, I like I said, I mean, like my little cousin, he's out, he's a kicker, you know. Mm -hmm, he's a junior. Mm -hmm. Okay. He's a first-year kicker and stuff, you All know. Right. He did great things this year. I mean, how Montebello win a few games this year and stuff. I mean, so am I. I'm just trying to, you know, guide him so he could go in the right direction so yeah. he could give himself a chance to play at the next level and stuff. But, yeah, I mean, okay. he did great things this year. He'll talk to you about them and okay. go from there. Absolutely. Well, you you you, you know uh, some of the players that have gone on to um, uh, Division One and Division One A. We'll speak of Aaron Cantu. He had yeah, a, yeah. a great season and getting a very close friend of yours. And teammate, uh, was he a teammate at ELAC at um, one time? Cantu or yeah, uh, Aaron Cantu? Oh, yeah. Cantu was uh, yes. my quarterback the year we won the championship okay. at ELAC in the bowl game. Yeah. Yeah. And, and in speaking more for the East LA program, I'll just put in Michael Weish. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay. Um, defensive tackle. And yeah. he's, he's supposed to be, I think, Miami, I think. Yes, the sure. Hurricanes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Miami. So, Best of luck to him, man. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of good things are being said about the program at East LA College. And you, of course, fit in there with that championship year. Yeah, I mean, okay. it was great, man. Being able to win the championship, you know, in a long time. You know, made history, you know, we believed yeah. in, you know, we just went out there and did what we had to do and won a championship. Okay. All right. Carlos Lozano, I think we could continue on, uh, but in the interest of time, we're going to have to uh, kind of wrap up this segment. But you have been very kind to come in and give us yeah. your your firsthand um, report yeah. as to where, where you uh, will be going. Because, as you know, uh, through our program on the Internet, he silly sports scenes followed, and, yeah. and people – Want to know? Yeah. Definitely. Where's Carlos? <laughs> this yeah. is a very good opportune time to fill in uh, the past and what's going on, and and really look ahead to your future. Okay. And very promising, and we will continue to follow you. Thank you. Anytime you really come, appreciate you it. come back to, to home. You know, yeah. your second home, Mikasa yeah. Sukasa. <laughs> yeah, it'll be right yeah. here. Okay, Carlos. Any last um, words? I always give the guests an opportunity to. Look straight ahead, and any family, friends, or someone you know that will be watching this to give them, give them a message right now. And just shout out to all the kids out there, you know, chasing dreams. Just follow your dreams, you know. Um, Anthony Denham, uh, stay tuned for him. He's about to do great things. He got invited to the uh, 2014 Combine, so he's getting ready. He's out in Florida right great. now uh, training to get ready. You know, he's another Easter Lake kid, so, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, we're all trying to get to that point. So just follow your dreams and keep pushing. Just and, like he is. And uh, as Carlos said, uh, and as Michael Weiss said, student athlete, but what's the first word in that phrase? Student. student. Yep. And there's where Carlos is going to excel to get that degree because yep. you, that's your it's main most goal. Important, man. <laughs> that's the most important thing. You want to you wanna, you wanna set, your you wanna set, your, set yourself out for the rest of your life, you know, for your family. You know, you want to have a degree. That paper I mean, means a lot, especially if you're a kid from around the community, East L.A., L.A. area. That's worth a lot. Okay. And Carlos, with his uh, God-given talent and his size and athletic ability, it's really, it's going to happen. 
And, yeah. and that's what we believe. We're going to be in Carlos's corner uh, throughout his uh, career in college and then off, off into the NFL. Mark our words, he will be seen on a Sunday in the near future after his college days are complete. He'll be in the NFL. And, um, uh, Carlos, we want to wish you the Thank best you of luck. Much. And, again, we are only a phone call away or text <laughs> yes, message definitely. away or an email. So <laughs> yeah. when you come back, please visit us here on East LA Sports no, Scene. Thanks again for having me on the show. All right. It's a great Carlos Lozano, uh, pride of Montebello High School and East Los Angeles Community College. He's a Husky forever. And uh, the Montebello Oilers. 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 Yeah. There you go. Last words, they won the, the big rivalry this year? Yeah, yeah. Um, there you they go. ended up winning uh, the Almond League title for I don't know how many years, maybe 15, I don't know how many years. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Lots of things to be very proud uh, about and to be happy. So we leave uh, on a very, very good note. Our dear friend Carlos Lozano, don't go away. We're coming right back. Remember, there is another Lozano on the horizon. His name is Enrique. He's going to be coming in here on our third segment here for East LA Sports Scene. Don't go away. We'll be right back. And hey, welcome back to our third segment, and it is a family affair, the Lozano clan here with Carlos first, of course, uh, talking about his endeavors now and getting back into college. And he said, Rico, hey, my first cousin, Enrique Lozano, a junior at Montebello High School, uh, how about bringing him on and t let's get his story going now at this age. And I said, Carlos, great idea. Bring him so our viewers can now uh, meet and greet for the first time Enrique Lozano. And how are you doing, Enrique? You good yourself? I'm doing well. Thank you for coming. And uh, another story developing here in the, in the Lozano family. Yeah. All eyes are set on you. And let's talk about uh, your specialty in Montebello High School. Uh, you're very, very excellent at doing that. And you've been awarded. And uh, your career is starting to, to really gel and blossom. Awesome. Let's talk about um, what's going on for you uh, as a football player at Montebello High School. Mm, well, yeah, I'm a, I'm a kicker right now at Montebello, my first year. Okay. Um, I wasn't starting in the beginning because the other, the starter kicker, mm -hmm. he had like three years, four years right there. Sure. And it was really my first year. So after a couple of games, the coach started having faith in me. Okay. And he started believing in me. And then that's when I started achieving my goals. Okay. Now, kicker is a very multi-dimensional position. And let's tell our viewers what phases of the kicking game you're excelling at right now. Um, well, I do kickoff, um, okay. field goals, PAT. Okay. And next year I'm going to do punt. Okay. Um, wow, your work's cut out for you because yeah. that's a very, very important uh, spot on yeah. the team. And you've earned the respect now. And you've also earned some awards. Uh, this past season. Let's tell our viewers about that. Um, well, I got the the special teams kicker of the year from my team. Okay. I got the Amon League kicker, the uh, aerial kicker for Whittier. Mm -hmm. and okay. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And okay. I, I scored. I beat, uh, passed the record for 54 yarder okay. at my school. All right. And some other long distance field goals. Okay. okay, and we, we were going to ask about that exactly, the best accomplishments that uh, um, you, you performed this season, uh, this past season, and I know that uh, the field goals were very important for you. Uh, any of those were game winners or um, um, school records maybe? Well, the 54-yarder against Northview Okay. The, the school record, and um, I scored three against BG, which helped. The BG would be Bell Gardens. Okay, Bell Gardens. All right. Um, which helped the momentum build up for the okay. team. Okay. All right. Yeah. And in the big rivalry game with uh, Sure, how, how did that go? Um, I had one to kick, but they blocked it. Bad snap. Oh, okay. But mm -hmm. yeah, we got the, we recovered it and we scored a touchdown like that. Okay. Yeah. Now uh, we have uh, uh, some things here on your profile, um, and Ricky, we want to get into those and um, let's talk about again the football portion of what's happening because season's over, but it really doesn't end. Yeah. For the whole season, uh, you just get a little time off to let the body rebuild and regenerate. But uh, spring practice will be coming up pretty soon. Uh, the weight room is going on. But take us now into the spring and then into the summer camp and then the season for 2014. The expectation that uh, you have for yourself and then the team and the coaches. Um, well, right now I'm trying to work on my, my kickoffs especially because I need to put those into the end zone. Okay. Um, I go to camps to work on my kicks. And, you know, I'm trying to focus on just kicking right now. Okay. All right. And uh, as you mentioned, for your goals next year, uh, 100% yeah. is what you're looking at. Yeah. 100%. Okay. Um, now, let's talk about um, the, um, um, the, 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 the motivation you're getting. 
because it, it, it comes from family, a yeah. big sense of family that's pushing you, supporting you, helping you, guiding you, and of course, uh, your cousin. Yeah. Um, we've Carlos. got to talk about Carlos, but again, there's other family members. Let's talk about how, how that Lozano family really gets behind uh, uh, um, the children and, and watches them uh, excel in whatever they want to do. Well, my dad is the main one. He's pushing me, especially in school, so okay. you know, he wants me to go somewhere big. Okay. So he's really pushing me to excel in school and, and kicking as well. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, you know, Carlos, he's pushing me too to school. Mm. First. Oh, definitely. And, you know, he's trying to build the road for me. Okay. Yeah. All right. Them too. Now, I uh, want to ask about maybe some involvement with Carlos in terms of uh, you both of being in different positions, but in terms of the, the practice ethic, the work ethic, the uh, strengthening and conditioning uh, to, to really, really be on top of your game. Do you guys work out together maybe, or are you mm-hmm. going to maybe into the gym and doing some, uh, some workout regimens? Not right now. Not at the time. Maybe okay. later. He's okay. been wanting me to go lift with him, but there's no time. School, you know, okay. a lot of work. Okay. Now, uh, let's talk about school. Uh, some of your favorite subject and uh, your uh, academic profile, things that you like in school. Um, I really like math, you know. Math, I don't know why. It, it, you know, huh? it, brings well, it comes natural to you. Yeah. That, that, that's the way things are. I mean, people really see numbers. Some people see words. Yeah. You know, but that's, that's great because possibly the science, computer, yeah field for you and uh as you're only a junior you have this coming season of course to to uh, prepare and have a big one uh which could give you that that lift into possibly being recruited yeah. by some of the colleges so uh that's always on the horizon for for um uh, players at the high school level your thoughts on that are you going to be uh, hopefully looking to attract some of the recruiters to come and watch you um yeah I'm, i really want to go somewhere straight out of high school because uh, my cousin's telling me that he doesn't want me to go the road of Vilek. Mm-hmm. Um, he said it was really good, but he really wants me to go straight from high school to like D1 or D2. Yes, yeah. and have more time at that level yeah. to then be seen. Yeah. Because uh, as we always have um, felt for Carlos uh, to go to the NFL, is just as important for punters, kickers, to also be there on those Sundays yeah. and, and see the, the Lozano name on that jersey. And one never knows. But if you are able to really, uh, as they say, perform it at the high level, sky's the limit. Yeah. Okay. And if, uh, say, some of the schools uh, you might want to go to, uh, if you wanted to go there and, and possibly even walk on, what schools might those be? Mm, I really like USC or okay. UCLA, one of them too. Oh, okay. Yeah, somewhere close home. Mm-hmm. Maybe okay. Oregon, you know, somewhere out there. Oh, okay. In the Pac-12. You like yeah. the Pac-12 conference? Okay. As, but as you know, there's SEC. There's, oh, hey, there's all kinds of uh, colleges all over the, the country that uh, I know certainly that it would, it would be nice to see one of our, our very own uh, young Chicano, Mexicano, Mexican-American players with their name on, uh, on their jersey punting and performing on, on any given uh, a day in, in front of huge crowds. And we hopefully will see you in that environment as well. Yeah. Okay, uh, quickly, uh, Enrique, some of the players you may uh, be watching um, in terms of techniques, uh, in terms of learning and uh, applying some of the things you learn uh, to your craft, to your, to what, your skills. Any, anyone at college level or NFL level? Um, I really like Goskowski. Okay. Um, the Patriots, yeah. Okay. I really look at him a lot. You know, trying to get whatever he, mm-hmm. his technique. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, anyone in college level? Um, not really. Okay. Um, favorite college team? USC. Okay. Favorite pro team? Um, Patriots. Ah, okay. All right. Um, and let's see, uh, the other thing. Oh, yeah, the, your hobby, I, I notice here that uh, there's another sport yeah. that you like. Tell us about that. Um, soccer, yeah. You know, I've been playing soccer since I've been like four. Okay. Um, never really, never really paid attention to football mm-hmm. until my freshman year when Carlos told me to join. Ah. Uh, I wasn't really interested, so I waited. And then the kicker and the punter from Montebello really pushed me to join football. Okay. And become the kicker. Okay. So you're just picking a sport up at the high school level, not at the Pop Warner. You didn't come up that way then, right? Okay, that's that's a big that's a big move there because yeah. uh, uh, to to go right into the sport is, is very difficult. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, Enrique, I think we we've, we've covered a, a lot of things again. Recapping here, eleventh grader 
Right now, yeah. you'll be going into your senior year in the fall. Um, and then um, uh, beyond that, we'll be following you as well. We want to keep our sights set on where you're going to be going in your career. And again, the, um, the main goal is to do the entire punting yeah. chores for the Montebello Oilers, correct? Yeah. Okay, uh, time to give us your, uh, our, our viewers, anyone that you may know uh, that would be watching our show tonight. Enrique, uh, give you an opportunity to have the last word. Oh, you know, it's a big dream to go, you know, play NFL, and I think you should just follow your dream and never stop wanting what you want. So just keep on dreaming. Okay. And stay in school, get that degree. Oh, yeah. Stay in you got to do that, Especially. right? Yep. <laughs> okay, Enrique Lozano, we want to thank you for coming in, for giving us an opportunity to meet you, yeah. and now to follow you. Yeah. Just like we're going to do for your, your, your cousin Carlos, and it's going to be with pleasure and a lot of pride to, to see you grow as a player, as a student athlete, and then off in your career, whether it is in the NFL or whether it's a doctor, a lawyer, computer, whatever it may be, we want to uh, let you know that we're supporting you thousand right. percent Thanks. okay that will do it for this edition of east la sports scene and it's still football season it never stops because although the games go on we still look at our players and look to build the profiles and keep everyone informed uh, about new players and then those that have been interviewed or followed by us in the past on East LA Sports Scene. So, for Eric Sarney, yours truly, Rico Cabrera, thanks for watching this edition of East LA Sports Scene. And remember, stay healthy, you will be wealthy, get out and into the outdoors or the indoors and do one of these sports. You certainly can do it, basketball, football, there's soccer, there's rugby, baseball, you name it, you got it, please do that. Uh, you will be very, very happy uh, in the end with those good health results. Thanks for watching, take care, until we see you again. Stay watching East LA Sports Scene on EastLASportsScene.com. Take care.